talk more about the whistleblower movement, I'm joined live by Thomas Drake, a former senior executive at the NSA who back in 2006 leaked information about the agency's data gathering. Thank you for joining us here. So it's been almost a year since the Snowden revelations exposed spying practices and data collection by the NSA. What impact has it had? Well, it's, it generated a worldwide discussion and debate about uh, surveillance and what's at stake in terms of individual sovereignty and privacy and, and how far the United States in particular in partnership with others including other countries and other security services as well as major uh, tele telecommunication concerns um, and internet service providers uh, in, in gathering data, collecting data and finding out everything there is to know about us and much of it uh, being conducted in secret. and he was able to bring out significant documentation, uh, prima facie evidence, to actually prove it. So certain individuals, including yourself, have previously gone against the NSA in exposing their activity for a long time now. Why did it take these Snowden revelations for people to take notice? I think it was sort of the tipping point, uh, or they say uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. I just think the preponderance of all the revelations over the intervening years and then seeing uh, full documentation on so many different programs as it metastasized uh, since 9-11, uh, since uh, that really uh, broke through this sort of the ceiling, that's what I call the signal to noise ratio. You're right, there were a number of people well before Snowden was ever known, including myself, uh, who had brought to light uh, mass surveillance and, and government fraud and abuse and violations of individual privacy um, and, and sovereignty. Uh, but that was not sufficient, although there was quite a bit of debate uh, and discussion, even in the media, both U.S. and, and overseas, uh, in the aftermath of the James Risen and Eric Lichtblau article that came out in the New York Times in December of 2005. But the government uh, put on a huge campaign to put much of what was uh, illegal into a new legal box that they made a lot bigger uh, called the FISA Amendments Act of 2008. Now, whistleblowers have come under fire for their actions. Uh, I've, in terms of personal effects and consequences, especially speaking as somebody who has been a whistleblower yourself, has it been worth the trouble? Well, I'm, I'm I mean, the first to acknowledge that the ordeal that I went through facing many, many decades in prison is certainly wasn't an easy one. Uh, your entire life is shattered. You're bankrupt. You're broken. You're blacklisted. Um, you know, I had my passport confiscated. I was put under severe travel restrictions. I became a criminal defendant. I've been charged with espionage. It's, it's one of the worst things that an American can be charged with. You've betrayed your country. You're not one of us. You're a traitor. You're a turncoat. Um, you, need, you need to be in prison for many, many years for what you did. And yet what is, what is happening in the United States in particular is the criminalization of anybody who dares speak truth to or of power and the First Amendment is being severely eroded by, by the very gov government instruments of power to take that away as a fundamental right enshrined in the Bill of Rights in, for the United, within the United States Constitution. Now, whistleblowers have been gaining... I'm just one of a number... I'm, oh. No, go ahead with what, what you were saying. You're just a number one. Yeah, I'm just... Obviously, my, my case became quite public, but you, uh, Edward Snowden... This case uh, went worldwide. It really went viral in terms of impact. It became the most you know, wanted, wanted person on the planet in terms of the United States injustice system. Uh, they were doing everything they could to, to bring him back and incarcerate him. And no doubt he would have ended up in prison uh, for uh, even longer than me if, if I had been found guilty on all the charges that the government laid at my feet uh, as part of a 10 felony count indictment. It's really, really dangerous in the United States now to, to speak uh, truth to, to the government and about the government. And I'm, I'm one of a number of people. I mean, any number of people. I was the first whistleblower since Ellsberg, but Ellsberg himself has said uh, that what was legal under the Nixon administration, uh, what was illegal under the Nixon administration is now quite legal uh, under the Obama administration. This is what's happened in the United States. And Edward Snowden knew, uh, having seen what happened to me and others, that he could not remain in the U.S. He would have been t t pulled right off the street um, and incarcerated. He had to escape the United States and have any hope of getting what he knew into the hand, in the public interest, into the hands of reporters and journalists he'd already been in contact with, and to have any hope of remaining free. 
Uh, we see the internet more and more becoming a tool for exposing secrets of governments around the world. Do you think that is an effective tool to battle spying practices and uh, to bring about reform? Well, actually, in terms of the technology, it's a level playing field. Uh, as much as the government wants to control it, uh, it's very difficult to control uh, internet and information. Information wants to be free. Uh, you know, the WikiLeaks model is, is a demonstrable example of exactly that. Uh, you provide a mechanism and a platform uh, for government and corporate, corporate secrets, uh, and then you share it with the world. And although obviously people and elites get upset with it and those in power don't yield power very willingly, they don't like having a mirror held up. But that model is crucial in terms of distributing truth uh, in the public interest and informing people about what's going on uh, in, in the secret hallways and the, the back corners of their own government and in, lar in large, large corporations who are often in direct partnership uh, with the government. Um, do you think that, for example, a website that has the ability to receive anonymous leaks uh, is an effective tool in protecting whistleblowers? Yes, it's not 100 percent. I mean, that was actually discussed at the ExposedFacts.org launch event in which I attended um, because they're using a, a tool called SecureDrop. Uh, but you do have to be in an anonymized, encrypted environment and the primary environment in which you need to be, not just a regular browser environment, but is inside of the Tor environment. Well, that's a distributed mechanism and anonymizes you across the entire internet uh, in terms of how, how it actually works. Um, it does give you a reasonable expectation of anonymity and being able to submit uh, both you know, information that you believe, whistleblower level information, you believe uh, needs to be uh, told to the public in their own, in their own interest. And that includes, as was discussed, because uh, there was a question that came up about that during the Q&A portion after, after the formal introductions uh, of the program and, and the speakers, that includes classified information. All right, Thomas Drake, thank you very much for your time.